Hi everyone. As promised we have something a little bit different today. I was very lucky to obtain these two lamps off of eBay um, for what I consider a silly price. Anyhow, they're both the same. Let's, let's put one aside and we'll have a closer look to see exactly what we've got. Just looking at it I'm still using my new camera so I don't know whether it's going to last out the battery's just gone yellow so I might have to put the charging lead in as you can see there's a, a normal tungsten filament one end is connected to one of the feeds the other end the filament is set itself is straightened out, so it's just a sing, uh, just a wire without the, the coil, and it goes through a thoriated tube. It's been coated with thorium oxide, and that aids with the actual emission. Now, what happens? You've got this bead little round bead there which is tungsten and the idea is that you apply a small voltage to the heater or filament of about 7 volts this warms the heater up and the thoriated tube if you think of a normal thermionic valve or tube they're often coated with, with thorium and it aids the emission of electrons when it heats up. And the idea is, once you warm that up, you then apply a higher voltage of, with this lamp, between 100 and 250 volts. I haven't done this, and I'm not going to. As far as I know, these bulbs are actually pristine. They've never, ever been used. And you apply the voltage between these two points, and it strikes an arc. The arc is obviously between the bead, the tungsten bead, and the thoriated part of the filament where it joins. Now, as you can see, there's three lead-in wires. They go through the pinch, and you go to an Edison screw base, the normal standard size. I've forgotten the actual number of these things. I can never remember numbers. I'm, I'm number blind, unfortunately. We look at the base. It's reminiscent of one of those three-way lamps that are available. There's, in fact, three contacts. You've got the centre contact, which is connected to the tungsten bead. You've got the outer ring, which is connected to one side of the heater. And the screw base. Which is, which is connected to the other side. So there's your three contacts. You can show it on the paper. There's the Edison screw base, three contact. The centre contact goes to the bead and the ring and the screw part goes to the heater. There I've shown the thoriated oxide we might have a visitor. Um, I do apologise for if we have a visitor. I think we might do. One pussy cat. See, she loves to get in to the act. She's a lovely cat. Anyhow, getting back to the bulb. I'll give you a bit of history on this. I actually cribbed this off of... Um, one of the uh, the other uh, data sheets on um, uh, Google Lamp Tech, very very excellent site for knowledge of lamps. So I have in fact nicked a bit of that, I um, which I think was actually taken from the the Royal Ediswan catalogue. It appears the lamp I've got is possibly the earlier one of the two. The one shown on that article has two beads. Mine have just got the one um, and also the one that was shown on there has a bayonet cap 
with extra contacts that's got four contacts because you've got an, an additional bead right let's have a look now the I'll give a little bit of history about this this thing the purpose of these lamps was used in early projectors the idea was to have a very very small source of light well as you can see the source of light would be generated within that arc so it would be very very small this lamp is rated at 100 candle power the AC versions I think were a little bit higher but this is the DC version and the arc was produced as obviously the exact measurement between the base and the center of light this is carefully done and it would be arranged in front of a lens now these lamps were invented or I suppose invented being the right word at the Ponder's End Labs now Ponder's End Labs are I think may be connected with the Brimsdown works I'm not 100 certain on that so someone out there will probably correct me if I'm wrong um, but suffice to say that the whole idea was done there it was done by the Royal Ediswan Company which become a part of AEI Associated Electrical Industries and it probably goes back to 40s 50s I don't know the exact date Anyhow, just ending with this because I think the battery is going to give out in a minute. The lamp's 100 candle power. I know I'm cribbing. I've got the crib sheet here. 100 candle power. The volts between 100 to 250. That is the arc volts. The envelope or the glass bulb is G75. The arc, I assume, is 2 amps. Now I'm taking that from the other version. So it's possibly 2 arc at 2 amps. The filament is 7 amp at 7 volts. I'm also assuming that as well. The cap, as stated, is Edison screw 3 contact. I think I more or less, more or less covered it. The reason for the, uh, the thoriated heater part is to aid better emissions. And you heat it up first, then apply the higher voltage to strike the arc. Um, as I say, any comments please make. I will be putting another unusual bulb on tomorrow. That hasn't come through the post yet. So people out there may be able to help me out what it is. Because I haven't got a clue at the moment. Got some ideas, but not 100%. Anyway, I'll show you what's on, on the cap. There was 100, 100, to 100 candle power. 100 volts. 250 volts and on the other side Royal Ediswan pointer light made in England as far as I know it was only Royal Ediswan or possibly Mazda which was the same company at the time that manufactured these and you can see the three contact base anyhow once again thanks for looking any comments please make any questions please ask um, and I'll I'll try and try and get back to you. As I say, there will be an interesting one coming up very soon. It's just in the post; it hasn't arrived yet. So I will sign off, showing you one of my beautiful pussy cats. Beautiful cat, that one. I've got three of them: two blacks and a white. Anyhow, once again, thanks for looking, and thank you again. Thank you.